Hi, I'm Glenn Spencer on the border in Arizona. I made this video 20 years ago. I stand by every word. What I watched happen in California seems to be happening in America today. Just like Pete Wilson, Donald Trump is trying to defend our country. And he is seeing the same kind of radical response. Will Republican leaders find the courage to support our president? Or will they capitulate and lose America like we lost California? That little piece of land that I own, where I live, where my family presides, where I raised a family, is part of America, and it should not have to go through what it's going through now. We have been overrun by people who have no business being here. We have been devastated in our job market by people who have no business being here. We have been devastated in our schools by people who have no damn business being here. Faced with billions in costs, gang killings, and overcrowded, failing schools, and a negligent government, a California grassroots movement answered with Proposition 187. Proposition 187 officially declared that the people of California have and are suffering economic hardships caused by the presence of illegal aliens, and that they have and are suffering personal injury and damage by the criminal conduct of illegal aliens, and that they have a right to protection of their government from persons entering this country unlawfully. In a courageous act, California Governor Pete Wilson, through his complete support behind Proposition 187, long before it was popular to do so. As a former mayor of San Diego, member of the California Assembly, U.S. Senator and Governor, Pete Wilson understood the threat California was facing. He knew America needed Proposition 187. The reaction to Wilson was swift. The largest demonstration ever held in Los Angeles. Thousands of Mexican flags and people yelling, Wilson no, raza si. Despite vicious attacks by Mexicans and liberals, Wilson stuck to his guns and won in a political landslide, and five million Californians passed Proposition 187. The message of this election is that hardworking taxpayers will cast their votes for those with enough courage and honesty to fight for what's right and to change what's wrong. Four years later, Lieutenant Governor Dan Lundgren sought to succeed Wilson as governor, but he didn't have Wilson's courage. On September 23, 1998, respected Sacramento Bee political observer Dan Walters wrote, The most important facet of California's journey into the 21st century is that the state's population is growing very rapidly. The 30 million Californians that the 1990 census counted will be nearly 35 million by 2000 and could reach 50 million by 2025, demographers agree. That growth, fueled largely by foreign immigration, and an extraordinarily high birth rate permeates every aspect of Californians' lives. It underlies traffic congestion, the state's educational dilemma, social tension, the convoluted housing market, water conflicts, local government angst, air quality, and economic transformation. Walters said that neither candidate, Dan Lundgren or Gray Davis, would talk about the terrible effects of immigration. Democrats are advocates of high levels of immigration. They opposed Proposition 187. The head of the California Democrat Party, Art Torres, is an anti-American, pro-Mexican racist. The Democrats picked Antonio Villarigosa, a Mexican nationalist, as Speaker of the California Assembly. Some in California say the term Democrat leader and traitor are synonymous. But some ask, why would the Republicans walk away from the issues? Why wouldn't they speak the truth? Dan Lundgren could have told the voters that after Proposition 187 passed, the Mexican government moved swiftly to overcome this new resistance to their invasion by promoting dual citizenship so Mexicans could vote in the U.S. Dan Lundgren and the Republicans could have told the voters that this scheme was laid out in a Mexico City newspaper on March 27, 1995. It was a plan to defeat Pete Wilson, and those who think like him. Jorge Bustamante, a leading Mexican intellectual, made it very clear. Dual citizenship was about conquest. This is just a partial translation. 
Quote, Anyone who wants to defend the interests of Mexico wherever they reside should work to do so. To achieve that objective, we should make it easier for Mexicans to vote in U.S. elections. Unquote. Dan Lundgren should have told the voters that dual citizenship was an act of war by Mexico. Dan Lundgren and the Republicans didn't tell the voters that after Proposition 187 passed, 400 Latino leaders met at the University of California at Riverside to join in this plan to use the ballot box to defeat America. We need to concentrate and help those organizations like One Stop with Juan Jose Gutierrez and Renan Nacional Mexicana with Burke Corona, and any organization that helps make citizens. Power is not given to you. You have to take it. Remember, 187 is the last gasp of white America in California. Dan Lundgren and the Republicans didn't tell the California voters that the head of the California Democratic Party had said that 187 was the last gasp of white America in California. But Voice of Citizens Together did. On May 7, 1995, VCT ran a full-page ad in the Los Angeles Daily News exposing Torres' remarks. The media ignored it, but Art Torres didn't. Party, I thank you for being here, and I welcome you, Senator Art Torres, the chairman of the Democratic Party of California. Well, that's a great number, man. Surprising. <laughs> number, really. viva la raza! I love saying that because all the anti-immigrant groups always put out new messages and political ads whenever I say that, and I want to say to them, stop trying to send me back to a country I wasn't born in. Our tourists said Latinos had to make citizens. We need to concentrate and help those organizations like One Stop with Juan Jose Gutierrez and Renan Nacional Mexicana with Burke Corona, and any organization that helps make citizens. But who are these organizations that the head of the California Democratic Party is advocating? Let's start with Hermandad Mexicana Nacional, the Mexican Brotherhood. The 1989 issue of Ethnic Orange County described Hermandad as, quote, an advocacy group for the rights of undocumented people, unquote illegal aliens. It was founded by Bert Corona, a self-described Marxist-Leninist, according to the Los Angeles Times. It has received over 30 million dollars in federal funds with the help of Robert Dornan. I want to know everything that Ehrman Dodd was involved with. Obviously during the resolution, I believe when I describe Ehrman Dodd to you, it will be a slightly different organization than has already been explained. These people have violated the law the federal and the state government has revoked their charters. They have taken money from them. These people were criminals. We're talking about people who were possibly implicated in crimes here. This Hermanidad Mexicana Nacional, or whatever they call themselves, is one of the most corrupt organizations that has ever existed that is receiving federal money. And to see members tonight talk about racism is totally unjustified, and you should be ashamed of yourselves for doing that. One-Stop Immigration, a huge citizenship factory headed by Juan Jose Gutierrez with offices throughout the western United States. One-Stop Immigration is non-stop invasion. Its logo is the 13-star flag. Many Americans see it as the beginning of their nation. Not One-Stop Immigration, it sees it as the end. They plan to push us back to the original 13 colonies. How is your organization funded? Our organization, basically like most uh, nonprofits, depends uh, uh, on, on government contracts. Mr. Gutierrez gets government contracts. So let's see where his loyalties lie. First, as our national anthem is played. And now the Mexican national anthem. Here he is holding the mic for Ricky Sierra. Ricky Sierra, the Chicano National.
National Guard need to tell you today that we're here united and we're recolonizing America, so they're afraid of us. They're very afraid. It's time for us to take back what is ours. Here is Gutierrez introducing his good friend Christopher Zabala, Minister of Information of the Brown Berets de Aslan. Sigue el compañero de los Brown Berets, Christopher Zabala. 30 seconds, brother. Let's move. Christopher Sibala, known for his rabid anti-American ravings, was there at another demonstration against America on the 4th of July, 1996. Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight, Forrest Sawyer. Good evening. This 4th of July was marked by celebrations and barbecues and by consideration of an issue that is threatening to divide the nation. Increasingly, the debate over illegal immigration has turned into argument over who should be allowed to stay here, who pays for the government services illegal immigrants receive, who may be losing jobs to them. The argument turned violent today when demonstrators on both sides of the issue met in the streets of Los Angeles and fought over what our nation should become. Here's ABC's Brian Rooney. Call the INS! Call the INS! A group calling itself the Voice of Citizens was demonstrating against illegal immigration when it met a counter-demonstration by an immigrant group carrying placards bearing communist slogans. They traded taunts, and a demonstrator on the immigrant side stomped on the American flag. Within a few minutes, the two groups clashed. The focus of the incident was California's Prop 187, the 1994 law that would bar illegal immigrants from receiving public education, social services, and non-emergency health care. The network report of the 4th of July attack was good but not complete. Mark Coogan, a local reporter on the scene, saw it all. And when a conservative group opposed to illegal immigration planned a protest here, but they were confronted by counter-demonstrators who appeared to be bent on violence. down and the cops got intimidated they left i asked them i said what do you have an argument or bricks and they threw up then they, they i got my answer in a couple seconds go back to boston go back to the plymouth rock you kill them the people opposing the conservatives were from the city of bell they come here to protest controversial bell school teacher isola foster who favors banning illegal immigrants from public education coogan got it right the latinos were from the city of Bell, where Isola Foster taught high school. She was to speak at the 4th of July rally. They came to Westwood to attack VCT and Isola Foster. They attacked her because she appeared on the McNeil Lara News Hour to support legislation pending in Congress. Joining me now are two educators and two members of Congress. Here in Los Angeles are David Tukovsky, a member of the LA School Board, and high school teacher Isola Foster. Um, from your vantage point as a high school teacher, how serious is the problem, as you see it, of the illegal immigrant children, and why is the bill necessary? It's a serious problem because of illegal immigration being the number one reason that the Los Angeles Unified School District schools are overcrowded. VCT was attacked on the 4th of July because it resists illegal immigration and because a black high school teacher spoke the truth on public television citizens together had demonstrated before at the Westwood Federal Building without incident. Today they said their civil rights have been violated on Independence Day. We are calling on the Congress of the United States to launch an investigation into this attack on the civil rights of Americans by organizations dedicated to the destruction of the United States. Place. We're losing our country. We have lost California to an illegal alien. We have lost our public school. We're losing everything. And now we'll fight them back. And we're not going to stop. Christopher Zabada on July 4th, 1996. We're here in Westwood. This is the fourth time we've been here in the last two months to show 
white Anglo-Saxon Protestant LA, the few of you who remain, that we are the majority and we claim this land is ours, it's always been ours and we're still here and uh, none of this talk about deporting. If anybody's going to be deported, it's going to be you. On October 12th, 1997, Juan Jose Gutierrez led a march on Washington to demand amnesty for millions of Mexicans. They were led there by a band from the Mexican army. Gentlemen, we were all inspired and moved by those sounds from the military band. They led, they led our contingents of thousands upon thousands of people that came to the nation's capital to stand for justice and equality. One Stop Immigration is an anti-American, pro-Mexican organization dedicated to conquering the American Southwest. And we, the taxpayers, are paying for it. But Dan Lundgren didn't tell California voters. The Mexicans are seeking to take back the Southwest by outvoting Americans in their own elections. In the same 1995 ad, which exposed Art Torres, Voice of Citizens Together alerted Americans to Mexico's scheme for one-way dual citizenship. Ten days later, the Daily News printed a letter from the Mexican Consul General in Los Angeles. It said in part, quote, In regard to the paid advertisement published by Voice of Citizens Together in the Daily News issue of May 7th, under the heading of Proposition 187 was the last gasp of white Americans in California, the Consulate General of Mexico states the following, the government of Mexico does not plan to grant double citizenship to Mexican nationals residing in the United States. The Mexican government has made perfectly clear through appropriate channels that it does not recognize double citizenship. The issue of double citizenship has been raised for many years and has no relationship at all to Proposition 187." Unquote. On May 21, 1995, the Daily News printed VCT's response. It said in part, According to the Christian Science Monitor, April 7, 1995, quote, but not until the Mexican consul in Los Angeles, Jose Angel Pescador Osuna, began pressing the Mexican government following the Proposition 187 vote in November, did the idea of dual citizenship begin moving. Not only was dual citizenship the direct result of Proposition 187, Pescador Osuna was behind it, and he lied about it. And this is dual citizenship, not dual nationality. Plans are now being finalized for Mexicans to vote in Mexico's elections in the United States. Mexicans living abroad will be able to vote in those elections. Candidates coming through California, there'll be paid advertisements. For the first time, we will actually see candidates campaigning here in the state of California. So on the day of the election, they're going to open up polling places. It might be where the consulate's offices are. They might be mobile polling places, but people will be lining up to mark a ballot and depositing it here in California. On February 6, 1998, Pescador Osuna attended a conference on the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo sponsored by the Southwestern School of Law. He reported on his efforts to gain dual citizenship for Mexicans. Here are his very words. Now, Congress approved also the law of nationality. If that is the case, I would say that everything Mexican-American that lost uh, some rights in the 19th century, I want uh, to I'm gonna ask him recover them. And, uh, even though I'm saying this uh, part serious, part uh, joking, uh, I think we are advancing to the Reconquista de California. Question. What the Mexican Consul General just said is that the Mexican Congress has restored voting rights which Mexicans lost after the War of 1848, which ended with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. He also said Mexico is reconquering California. He called it La Reconquista. Contacted by reporter Sam Verhove, VCT provided a recording of Osuna's remarks to the New York Times, which included them in a front page story on April 14, 1998. But Dan Lundgren didn't think it was important enough to tell California voters. On May 7, 1998, as the campaign for California governor was heating up, the California Coalition for Immigration Reform erected a billboard in Blythe, California at the Arizona border. It read, Welcome to California, the illegal immigration state. Don't let this happen to your state. It made no mention of race, 
national origin, or ethnicity. There are over two million illegal aliens in California, far more than any other state. California is the illegal immigration state. Section 133 of the 1996 Illegal Immigration Control Act permits states to take an active role in immigration law enforcement. It says the Attorney General may enter into a written agreement with a state or any political subdivision of a state to perform the function of an immigration officer. The CCIR billboard included a toll-free telephone number Americans could call to learn about this new law and how they could protect their communities, just as Congress wanted them to. This lawful act by American citizens using their own money to encourage law enforcement was met with terrorist threats by Mario Obledo and the California Coalition of Hispanic Organizations. On June 4, 1998, the coalition, whose board members include former California Supreme Court Justice Cruz Reynoso, issued a press release announcing that they would attack the CCIR billboard on June 27, 1998. Obledo's threats made him an instant media celebrity. He appeared on a number of radio and television programs, and the story was covered extensively by the print media. An anti-immigration billboard is the subject of a hot debate right now over rights and wrongs. A Latino group protested the sign which calls California the illegal immigration state. One member of the group threatened to burn down the sign. But typically the approach people use was non-violent. You're talking about burning down a sign. Well, I'm talking about burning down the sign because the sign was so offensive that it needed burning. This, of course, is on a very small scale, but Mr. Mario Obledo, who does not like the sign, thinks the sign is racist, feels that he has the right not only to protest, which, of course, is his First Amendment right, but to take physical action and to burn up, blow up that sign. He's also apparently threatened two other uh, advertisers who have signs nearby. Mm -hmm. The sign refers to illegal immigration, and that means in the state of California, Mexicans. And eventually, we're going to take over all the political institutions of California. In five years, the Hispanics are going to be the majority population of the state. And you don't think that we fear that with the mindset that you are... And then, and then the law of the land will be open the borders, let everybody in, burn down billboards, shut up anybody you don't agree with, that once the Hispanics take over, then we're not going to have freedom of speech anymore. You're going to tell us what's okay to say. You're going to tell us when we're crying fire in a crowded theater. You know, it's one thing to cry fire in a crowded theater. It's another thing to set a fire, which you're about to do. On June 24, 1998, Martin Media, the firm contracted by CCIR to erect the billboard, removed it, citing repeated threats against it and its customers. On November 7, 1998, the CCIR billboard was re-erected, this time in Arizona. Using the identical message used in Blythe, it was positioned to face traffic entering California. It lasted one week. The property owner, who had agreed to the placement, rescinded permission. He said he had received threats from Mexican gangsters, threats against himself and his family. These terrorist threats against our freedoms were ignored by Dan Lundgren. He could have told the voters that Mario Obledo was the co-founder of the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Education Fund, or MALDEF, and that he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1998, and that Hillary Clinton praised him after his terrorist threats, and that his opponent, Gray Davis, had once called Mario Obledo his hero, and that he refused to condemn his terrorist activities. Dan Lundgren lost the California governorship because he refused to confront the issues. Another he would not talk about immigration. He refused to condemn racist remarks by the head of the California Democrat Party. He refused to condemn corruption and voter fraud. He ignored radical anti-American subversives and threats against America by a foreign power. And he ignored terrorist threats against America's freedom of speech by close associates of his opponents. California voters know the difference between courage and capitulation. Hi, I'm Glenn Spencer on the border in Arizona. I made that video 20 years ago and I stand by every word. What I watched happen in California seems to be happening in America. Just like Pete Wilson, Donald Trump is trying to defend America. And he is seeing the same kind of radical response. Will Republican leaders find the courage to support our president? Or will they capitulate 
and will we lose America like we lost California?